Hi there, my name is Susan Iback and I'm here to show you another little tip on how to be more effective inside Visual Studio. Today I want to give you a complete and utter tour of the enhanced scroll bar. You've probably poked around in a little bit, but I find some of the documentation is a bit lacking to explain all the different symbols and so on you get. The enhanced scroll bar is what appears on the right hand side here. The first thing you'll notice is a blue line going across the bar. That indicates your current cursor position on the screen. Um, so that's one of the little things you can do. If you were to change a line of code, maybe I decide to add a new comment here, you'll notice that yellow appears. The yellow um, appears inside the scroll bar as well as on the left hand side of the actual editor window itself to tell you you've made changes in your code. So you have visual cues to remind you what changes you've made to your code since it was modified or since you opened it. Now, if you do make a save to your code, then what will happen, or if you do a build, it'll actually mark it as a clean change. So what you'll see is green highlighting here, both on the edge of the screen and in the scroll bar itself, a light green. And that's telling you that you have a clean change to your code. And this is going to stay there until you actually close the project and reopen it. So that's the yellow and the green. If you were to make a syntax error somewhere in your code, let me just remove that semicolon, you'll of course see the squiggly inside the code editor warning you you've got an error in your code. You'll also see a red caret symbol appear inside the scroll bar. Now what's neat about this, let's say you were renaming a series of variables um, using something like a find and replace, you could quickly glance at the scroll bar and you might be somewhere else and then you can quickly just click on that red button uh, with your mouse and get back to the line of code where that error is located. So you can use that to move there. You can say, say scroll to that part of my code, find the change and fix it. So those red highlights allow you to see all the syntax errors in your code that need you to go there. So you can navigate often by clicking on it uh, or by saying scroll here or scroll up and down. A couple of other colors you might occasionally see if you are um, declaring a variable, uh, I'm just going to declare a variable called Bob here for a second. Um, what will happen is this variable, I've just added it to my code and it's not used anywhere. Now in the editor, you get that green squiggly line indicating you have a variable that you haven't used. Well, there's an indicator in the enhanced scroll bar as well. You'll actually see a dark green caret symbol, uh, that little square. So the dark green indicates you have an unused variable inside your code. You can also add breakpoints to your code and those will show up inside the scroll bar editor. So if I put in a breakpoint, you will see a nice little burgundy square appearing there wherever I have that breakpoint added. If you prefer to use bookmarks, um, bookmarks will show up as well. I'm just using control K, control K to add a bookmark. And you'll see that I get a sort of blackish square when I add a bookmark. So uh, bookmarks show up as a black square, Breakpoints show up as a burgundy square. Subtle positions, uh, color changes, but still somewhat useful. So we can see breakpoints and bookmarks. Um, another thing that's kind of neat is if you highlight a particular variable name. So in this case, I've got a variable called unit of measure. You can actually see a number of dots appearing all along the scroll bar. This is showing me all of the occurrences of that variable inside my code. So I can quickly sort of navigate and go, where am I using this variable unit of measure? And maybe I want to see where I'm using it and I can click on this and I can see all the highlighted instances. So showing me where that variable is being used inside my code. So once again, I have that ability both in the scroll bar and in the editor, it was highlighted in gray, but I can also hop between instances quickly by just clicking on the little purple, light purple buttons inside the scroll bar. So we can see breakpoints and bookmarks. We can see all the references of a particular uh, symbol inside a file, like our unit of measure. We can see the changed code that highlights in yellow. We can see saved clean changes to code. That's the light green errors in code highlighted in red cursor position, which is that line that grows across the bar. Now, some of you may be wondering, how can I customize the colors? Well, there is some customizing you can do to the scroll bar. You can't control the colors of the individual squares, but there are a few things you can change. First of all, if you want to change it, you can just right click on that scroll bar and choose scroll bar options. When you go here, you'll notice you have things like whether I want to show bookmarks or errors, I can control that. Um, I also have the ability to choose something called map mode. 
And I'm going to start without a preview tooltip first, and I'm going to make this as wide as possible. What the map mode does is it actually shows a small preview of the code as I scroll around on the screen. So it's, it's more of a, and the white box indicates the part of the code that's currently visible to me. So it's more like a, a mini preview of your code. You can sort of see it a little bit more cleanly, but it takes up more room on your screen. You can set that to be as narrow or as wide as you want. Now, what I like though is the preview tooltip. And it doesn't really matter if you have it narrow, medium, or wide, it won't change the preview. But what this allows me to do is now, when I put the cursor over somewhere in the scroll bar, it actually pops up a preview of that code for me. So that's another nice option. Now, in terms of being able to control the way things appear in the scroll bar, there are a couple of things you can control. If you go up to Quick Launch and you choose Font and Colors, this is in the in Tools Environment Fonts and Colors, and this is just an easy way of getting there. I can go here and you will see if you scroll down under Font and Colors, this allows you to customize the fonts and the colors used inside Visual Studio. And you'll see that some of them down here, if we scroll down, there's some which start with the word Overview. These ones here, here we go, Overview Background, Carrot, Collapsed Region, and Visible. These control how text appears inside the scroll bar itself. So the overview background, so that's really the scroll bar background. Let's say I made that uh, by default a, a nice cyan color. And let's say I made the visible part of it showing up with a yellow color. And I'll just show you how that appears. So you can see now that I have this purple blue background, cyan background, the visible portion is showing with the yellow background. The other two options, what do they control? Well, they if we go back to our font and colors and we scroll back down to our overview fonts because that controls the way our scroll bar appears. The caret is literally the color of the line that is showing me the current cursor position. So I can change that to a red color if I want to. And collapsed region, I'll just show you how that works. Let's make that a lime green so you'll be able to see it nice and clearly. So now you can see I've got a red line appearing to show me where my cursor is located in the scroll bar. And if I was to collapse a section of code by collapsing and expanding, you'll notice that the collapsed code shows up as a uh, highlighted green because that's how I said to show the collapsed code in the scroll bar. So now you know all those magic colors and exactly what you can change in the enhanced scroll bar. It's a great feature that was added in Visual Studio 2013 and continues moving forward. Have some fun with it, and now you know what all those little colors are for.